Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to cover vectors in R, more or less just the basics here. Uh, this is going to be the fifth video in the series here on programming in R. Uh, if you haven't watched the first four, I encourage you to do that, but let's dive on in. Okay, so today we're covering uh, vectors, and I'm just going to say this is basics, or more or less like an introduction here. And to start off here, Remember in R, there is no such thing as a scalar. Okay, so scalars are common in other languages. C is an example of this. Uh, a scalar is something that is a one unit numerical value. So you can scale things by say five or scale things by two. Um, R does not have such a thing. Everything in R is a vector, okay? So when you have a number like five, that's a vector, but it's just a one element vector. And another important part of R here, so with vectors specifically, is that inside of R, we cannot add or delete elements in a vector, okay? So this is the same concept as an array inside of C. Uh, this is also different than Python. So if you're used to using Python, you can actually add and delete elements, um, but in R you cannot do so, okay? So let's just try an example here. And to start off this example here, we're going to assign um, some values here to X. And so we're gonna say X is going to be a vector, which we're gonna use C to combine these, um, five, 10, 20, 25, and 30. And you'll notice here that I'm missing 15 because I'm just gonna do these by fives. Um, and then we're gonna print out X. So let's copy our code, put it down in the console and run it. So you can see now we have up here on the top right, tells you we have a vector here, uh, but it's going to be five, 10, 20, 25, and 30. So now we're going to use X to create a new list here, which is gonna be a new vector and we're gonna add in 15, okay? Because that's what we're missing. But to do this, I'm gonna use X again. So we're gonna recall this X, and this is going to be, again, another vector. And we're gonna do X, and we're gonna do the first two elements of X here. So this is just gonna be five and 10, which is what we want. Um, then we wanna add in 15, right? Is that third piece that would go here. And then finally, we wanna add in the third, fourth, and fifth elements of X. So three to five, hit enter. Now we're gonna hit X again to print it. So let's print X. And we're just gonna copy and paste this. And now we have five, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30, which is our new X. So it seems like we added a value into X but the truth is we actually reassigned X. And so technically speaking, X is like a pointer. So this would be again equivalent to C. This is like a pointer. Um, it changed where X is actually pointing to. And so in this case, right, we had some memory allocated for X, which was uh, five, 10, 20, 25, and 30. And then we created actually a new value. So X, again, we just reassigned it the same value. So X is gonna be like the pointer here. And now we have to create a new container or a new vector that now has six elements in it. And so we had to point to a new area. So that leads us to the question of why do we care how this works? And the simple answer here is because on large data sets, this can make our fairly slow, okay? So this is important from an execution standpoint. Um, if you're gonna start diving into, for example, like data science, or you work in something such as, I don't know, marketing analytics or like credit risk, and you have data sets that are 80, 100, 200 gigabytes, um, R can be fairly slow. And so doing different ways of programming and utilizing other tools such as SQL or Hadoop uh, will actually make this more feasible. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about, you know, lengths. So length, can be something helpful to know. 
length is just a built-in function. All you have to do is type in length, and we're going to put in x, which again is our vector. And then if we copy and paste this down into the console, it'll tell you it's six elements. Um, again, remember our counts from the beginning starting with one. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, this is different than other languages like C, which starts at zero. Um, this can be helpful. So we're going to do a couple examples here on length. Um, this can be helpful if we want to uh, loop through a vector. So we're going to create a function called find 30. And we're going to use the function function. And to not confuse you, we're just going to call it y. y is just anything that's going to be used inside this function. So once we run the function, uh, we can apply anything inside of it. We'll actually plug x into the function. Uh, but use y. And then we're going to do a for loop where we do iterations i in one, two. And then again, I need to know how long that vector is, right? It could be 5, 10, 15, 1,000. Could be anything. And if you don't know, it's just best to use something such as the length function here, where we can actually just iterate through the entire function without having to go in, find the numbers, and do it. Again, this is helpful when you're automating as well. And so now we're going to say... Um, if y, so if i inside of this vector y is equal to 30, then we're going to break. And then I also want to return i, so I actually want to know which element in the vector is equal to 30. And then of course we have to actually use the function. So we would type in um, find 30, and we'll do this on x. And then we're going to copy and paste this in. So just to show you guys, if you copy and paste the function in like this, right, nothing happens. It will create the function up here on the top right, but nothing actually happens because you haven't fed anything into the function. Um, we'll copy our function with x plugged into it. And it tells us we have six. So if we look up here, you know, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We can verify six is equal to 30. So now this seems kind of odd. Let's try something that's a little more reasonable here. So another looping example using length. So the length function here. We're going to call this G20. This is going to be finding anything that's greater than 20 and then printing out where it's at. So we do the function again. I'm still going to use Y here. And then we're going to do the for loop again where I in 1 to the total length here, and it's the length of y. And then we're gonna deviate a little bit by doing, okay, so if y, if the i component of the vector y is greater than 20, we want to actually print i. So what this is gonna do is gonna print out every position where um, it's going to be greater than 20. So we need to use the function. And to do that, we're just going to type in g20 of x. So plug this in. We'll copy and paste this in. And as you see up here, we should end up with 5 and 6 because it's 25 and 30, which is the 5th and 6th position in the vector. And of course, it prints out 5 and 6 exactly as we expected. And just to be a little complete here, um, when you program in general, so in the looping example, um, we need to consider any issues that could arise, okay? And most of you are thinking, I don't understand what you're saying here, what do you mean? Um, so let's say you have, um, so let's say you have a vector that is empty, okay? That means that the length of this vector is going to be equal to zero. So when you looked at this function, we started at one and went to the length. This is gonna result in the fact that we're gonna go, we're gonna plug in one, and then we're going to plug in zero. This is not going to give us what we want in most cases. Um, it's somewhat dangerous. And so the solution in this case would be um, to use seek. So it's a sequence. Uh, we're not going to cover it in this video, but I just wanted to point this out. As someone that has more advanced R programming background, you're going to be thinking uh, this is going to be an issue. So there are workarounds around this. In programming in general, it's important to look at all the different scenarios that could happen. Uh, this is where bugs come into code and sometimes results don't make sense, which is why it's important to actually check your logic um, and then actually run your code and then check the output to make sure it is what you expect.
And then something that's more helpful, so from my perspective working in finance here, length is helpful for checking calculations. Um, so what do I mean by this? Something really common in time series modeling in general is that we end up differencing data. And what this means is that you would take like the second value in a vector and you minus the first one. And then you would take the third value and you'd minus the second one and the fourth one minus the third one. So it's basically each row subtracted the one above it. Um, obviously the first element of this vector can't subtract anything above it. So what we're gonna do is we're going to expect that um, there should be n minus one here. So in our case, we have six minus one. This should give us five elements in the vector here. And I'm also gonna note here, um, naming inside of R, it is best practice here to use an underscore and not a period, okay? Uh, this is important because um, periods are used in function names, methods, and classes. So an example of this would be um, data.frame, which is a command inside of R here. And so, uh, and so anyways, it's just best, do not use periods, just use underscores if you wanna separate things. Okay, and the reason I'm mentioning this is that I'm gonna create something and we're gonna call um, our new difference series, we're gonna call it D of X. Okay, so it's the difference of X. And there's going to be, ah, dang it. Okay. So just a note here, because I'm kind of annoyed with this. If you have a apostrophe at the beginning of some comment and you hit enter, it'll keep giving you more comments. Something a little new, but something frustrating. Um, to get rid of this, as I mentioned, if you just put like a space or something and then when you hit enter, you don't have that issue. Okay, so the reason we're gonna do this is we're gonna use a function inside of it called diff. Um, so let's first just print out uh, the length of x. So this is our starting value. This should be six. Let's just run it and see. Okay, it gives us six. Now we're going to create d of x, which is going to be the difference of x. So you can see it's a function here. Um, you can specify different lags as well. So you could do all kinds of stuff. I'm not gonna go into that right now though. All right, so we're gonna do uh, the difference of x. So it'll just be like time two minus time t1 times time three minus time t2. So time series notation, basically row two minus row one, row three minus row two and we can take this and run this. And remember there's a difference of five between each variable that we had. It was five, 10, 15, 20. You can see up here in the top right, it's gonna give us five, 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 five. So there's five difference between each of them. And then we're gonna now take the length um, of D of X. And this should be five because it should be that we can't take the difference of the first row of this or the first element and it'll give us five. So again, if you wanna print these out just to kind of see uh, what they look like. So X is here and then D of X is here. So five, 10, 15, 20, 20, 30, and then you have all fives here because they're all differenced by five. Okay, so that's kind of the practical use of length and it is important to use. It seems silly and somewhat dumb when you first look at it, but as you get going through programming like I mentioned before, like the for loops, and also checking how large different vectors are, uh, can be quite helpful. So now in R, uh, matrices and arrays are nothing but vectors. Everything inside of R is a vector, okay? I can't emphasize that enough, uh, at least for data types here. So all these data that we're gonna be using, everything's a vector. Um, so an example here is a matrix uh, has column, in row information, but in R, it is still a vector. And I'm actually gonna prove this to you. And I should note that since it is still a vector, vector calculations will be the exact same, okay? There's no difference here, which is kind of nice and kind of helpful. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys a simple example of a matrix. I'm not gonna cover it in too much depth because in future videos, we're actually gonna dive in to the nitty gritty details of actually handling, manipulating, assigning, and doing all kinds of cool stuff with matrices. Uh, let's just create a matrix here. We're just gonna call it M. 
And to create it, we're just going to type in matrix. Uh, I'm going to do one to nine, nine elements. Uh, that would, should give us a three by three, right? So number of rows is three. Number of columns is going to be three. Okay, so to prove to you that these work like a vector and that R sees it as a vector, it's going to create a matrix, but it should be in a format such as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In this example, I am not going to assign any numbers or values inside this matrix. R will automatically assign them, and then you can see uh, how R actually does the calculation. So this is how R thinks. So we're gonna copy and paste this down below. And on the top right here, again, it'll show you some one by three, one by three, and it's some numbers, but that's not what we want. We wanna print this. So you just put in M, which we'll put in down here and hit enter. And you can see here it has three columns, which it nicely labels. And I like that it labels it this way because it shows you that to reference them, right? It's comma one for first column, comma two for second and so forth. And that rows are always listed as the first piece here, which is how you would actually reference these in code. Uh, but you can see here, so let's just make a note. R views a matrix as one long vector and it does so by column, okay? So you can see here it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It does that as one. So again, to kind of prove this to you a little bit more and to show you how this works, um, you know, let's do a calculation here. So this will kind of show you how it works. Um, let's take M, which is gonna be our matrix, and we'll reassign it to this value. Again, we're allocating new memory for this as we learned in the beginning of the video. Uh, we're just gonna take the matrix and we're gonna add two to it. So what we would expect here, and we'll put in M here to print it out. All right, so we should see this mathematically as one plus two, two plus two, three plus two, four plus two, five plus two. It should go all the way through, so just add two to everything. And the way it does this is it just goes through one giant long vector, which is one to nine. So let's copy and paste this in. And we can see here it's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11, right? It's exactly two added to everything. So kind of to wrap this video up here in a conclusion here is that everything in R is a vector. Uh, more importantly though, uh, understanding vectors is important to understand R. And you'll see as we get coding later in the series that thinking about things in vector format makes things a lot simpler and you'll understand how it's calculating it and why you have issues and errors. So anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.